Hi everyone, I am Dr. Ravina, NHS doctor specialised in women's health and I'd like to welcome you to this dedicated channel specialised for women's health. Today we have an amazing guest who is Dr. V and she is going to tell us all about our skincare tips. So I'd like to welcome you to this channel, Dr. V. Thank you. And today we'll be talking about PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. And I have done a lot of content on this, but actually I know it affects so many of you and specifically your skin. So I'd like to talk about with you, Dr. V, getting all, you know, Dr. V has so much knowledge on skincare. She's just released a book on uh, skincare for skin of color. And so what we would love to get from you today is how women with polycystic ovarian syndrome can better their skin and what top tips you have for them um, to improve the quality of the skin, reduce acne. We know it's one of the biggest issues, acne is uh, with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, so over to you, Dr. V. So PCOS is common. You know, you're looking at about 10% of mm -hmm. the female population who get it. Yeah. And what basically happens is that your ovaries um, get bigger, they enlarge, and you may or may not have cysts. And so what happens with your hormones is that estrogen and progesterone tend to go down and we tend to get increased testosterone. Mm. Now testosterone is considered the male sex hormone, but females have it too. Yeah. And when it's out of balance, um, it can have an impact on our body. So you can get weight gain. You can get something called acanthus nigricans, which mm. is basically thickening velvety skin that happens at the back of the neck, underarms, back of the knees, so in the folds pretty typical when it comes to insulin resistance and weight gain. In addition, you can get acne because don't forget that testosterone increases sebum production yeah. and so now you're more prone to acne. You also get something called hirsutism, so excess hair growth, yeah. um, which is why we tend to recommend ND YAG laser for skin of color for excess hair growth because constantly stripping the skin with wax is going to damage your skin barrier and coarser hair is harder to remove and so becomes you do a cost-benefit analysis on the treatment to remove the hair and it's causing more pain than good mm. uh, so I would recommend too much stripping of hair is better to actually laser or PCOS mm. so I think those are the key things that I want to discuss in today's video mm. okay perfect. so that's really useful information um, so we have already got a video on PCOS so watch that one and watch this one because we go more into treatment in this one and we know that PCOS is so hormone driven and so you know, do do? So, so what do we do about it? You know, we're born with our hormones, we can't change them. Yeah. So the next question is, what can we do about polycystic ovarian syndrome? Okay. And what can we do to help with all of these symptoms of hair growth and acne? And you know, it does have such a mental effect yeah. on us. You know, you know, how you look obviously is so impressionable for young girls who've yeah. just been diagnosed with this. So what can we do to help women who suffer from PCOS? So the first thing here is because this is primarily a hormonal issue, you do want to treat the, you want to treat that first. Mm -hmm. So they tend to put you on the combined oral contraceptive pill. Yeah. Uh, they may also put you on anti-androgen drugs. Now with anti-androgen drugs, first I take a blood test to assess if you actually have increased testosterone, because if you don't, then it's not going to be beneficial to you. But you actually want to do that first before you start treating the acne, because unless you treat the root cause, it's going to continue. If yes. your testosterone is increased, it's going to increase sebum production, it's going to clog your pore, you're going to get acne. So that's the first thing you want to do. The second thing would then be over-the-counter products. So the skincare routine I would recommend would be yeah. based on the pathology of acne. So what happens first of all when you get acne? So you've got a pore like this, you get increased sebum production. Mm -hmm. So that basically creates a goop inside your pore. And on top of that, your skin cells become sticky. So it's called hyperkeratinization. So it almost clogs the pore at the top. In addition, now you've created an anaerobic environment. There's no oxygen in this pore. Mm. And guess which bacteria loves to replicate in an anaerobic environment? It's P. acne's bacteria. And so now you've created a soup, a delicious soup of bacteria and sebum, <laughs> which then leads to a spot. So what do we do about that situation? Mm. So there's, there's a few things we can do. Number one, we want to unclog that pore. How do we do that? We use vitamin A. Yeah. So topically, the ones we tend to recommend would be retinol, retinaldehyde, my favorite, <laughs> uh, or tretinoin. Yeah. Uh, 
um, orally it'd be isotretinoin and that's for more severe acne uh, also known as Rakutane and you need to go and see a dermatologist so that's not going to be over the counter so that's the first thing you want to do mm -hmm. number two and very important for PCOS is using niacinamide mm -hmm. because niacinamide controls sebum production and don't forget it's testosterone that's increased your sebum production so niacinamide at two to five percent is going to be your best friend yeah the next thing you want to do is use salicylic acid you want to it's a fat soluble acid it's going to mm -hmm. get into the pore and unclog that pore yes and that's why salicylic acid at two percent is also going to be beneficial for, for you and you can do that from a young age mm -hmm. you know PCOS can kick in from your early teens mm -hmm. and so you you know salicylic acid and niacinamide are safe for young women to be using you know if you don't want to go to vitamin a at that age i can understand but those two ingredients are only going to help you yeah. the other one that we i would put in later on so um, and that's benzoyl peroxide benzoyl peroxide basically poisons p acnes with oxygen so remember i told you that in that anaerobic environment p acnes proliferates yeah. but actually if you put poison it with oxygen they die and so poisoning That's with with benzoyl peroxide yeah. is excellent yeah. Yeah. yeah i love how you've actually explained that because you know when you come into your doctor we give you sort of creams and as you mentioned vitamin a um, and that's something that you can get from your doctor but actually there's a lot you can get from over the counter yeah. so you can get salic salicylic acid yeah. over the counter you can get niacinamide yeah. and you know there's a lot of marketing out there so oh anti anti acne cream or you know spot busting cream but you actually need to know what is it on the shelf in the supermarket that you need yeah. and and Dr. is great at looking at the active ingredients of what we actually need for our skin and a lot of parents say to me in clinic is actually you know my child is suffering with uh, excess hair growth on, on her face or on her body and she's getting acne and I don't want them I don't want her to start on a, a, a combined or a contraceptive pill yeah, just yet I can imagine, yeah. so so what there's so many things that you've explained that we can actually try before we even get to the point of a yeah. hormonal contraception and especially because it does have an effect on our periods and not all girls want to just stop their periods yeah. if they've just started Started them, or if you're trying to conceive, you need to have your period. So the oral contraceptive pill isn't always the best option. Um, and it's interesting we spoke about vitamin A, so that's something we need to be cautious of. So if you are thinking to have children, we need to make sure that you're not using it uh, during that time of trying to conceive Correct. because of the, the implications of, of your baby yeah. with vitamin A poisoning. Um, but no, that's really interesting. So those active ingredients are things you can just pick up from the supermarket. Yeah. So Absolutely. That's, that's good that you told us about those. Then after this, yeah. um, with moisturizers, pick a light gel moisturizer. Mm. Now the word non-comedogenic mm. is a non-regulated term. So you can mm. buy a cream that has have fats in it right. that says non-comedogenic because first of all how do you prove that something is mm. comedogenic or not you have to look at the back of an ear of an animal mm. everything in the eu and uk is cruelty free so we don't do that and so there is no regulation when it comes to non-comedogenic mm. so you almost have to use your own uh, sense to think is this light is this going to plug my pore or is it thick heavy cream that is mm. not going to be ideal. Mm. So always opt for light gel moisturizers. Mm. Then the next one is, of course, your SPF 50. Yes. This really is key. And okay. I know people hate it because they think, oh, but this is going to clog my pores. Yeah. Um, I think pick one that is light for your skin and that you feel isn't going to irritate too much. I think a really good option might be the powder, um, the Color Science SPF 50 powder, okay. which is almost like makeup as well. Mm. And so it's tinted. Um, and I use it on top of my foundation um, when I'm topping up my SPR 50 throughout the day okay. so it's non comedogenic doesn't clog your pores and you get a bit of coverage as well mm -hmm. if you're worried about any sort of pigmentation on the skin Perfect. and it's actually something I wouldn't mind Sienna using as a teenager because okay. I wouldn't you know Sienna's uh, doctor my daughter. daughter she is <laughs> seven she's eight, eight now she's eight actually she's so a, still a baby but in the future you know you're always proof. thinking what would I be okay with her using at 13 40 yeah. I wouldn't want her to use proper foundation yeah. but actually a tinted sunscreen I'd be happy for her to use okay, okay. um and we're starting getting acne at that point so. yeah so that's really interesting so um so dr v's spoken about how we need to use like something quite light in terms of moisturizer anything that you would particularly recommend in terms of a moisturizer perfect for pcos PCOS. okay patients. so actually we're coming up with trio blemish which is a range specifically for acne and oily skin for skin of color and it's going to have an am and pm gel Okay. So the two moisturizers, but they've got actives such as niacinamide, azelaic acid, 
um, in the actual gel itself. So mm -hmm. the actives, you don't need to use any other serums or anything. Everything okay. is in your gel moisturizer. But so this is in your next range. That's coming out. Yes. And, and what, what about now? Is right now, that you yes. Can get now? There is. You can try Super uh, uh, Face Theory Super Gel. Is a, again a, a pure gel moisturizer. It doesn't have any actives in it, but it's a really great light moisturizer if you have clogged. Course. Okay, perfect. If you guys have used any moisturizers or SPF that you find useful, drop them in the comments yeah. below because we love to educate each other. So, and, and Dr. V's given some amazing um, products that you can also use. So, we've done our moisturizer, we've done our SPF. How yeah. much time should we be spending? So, you know, in the morning you want to like quickly do your face, get out, go to work, do whatever you need to do. How much time should we be leaving between moisturizing in the morning and doing our second layer of SPF? And you mentioned that we should also be putting SPF on um, after we've done our makeup. Yeah. So, like, how, how, do, the, you how do, do you do that? Right. Yeah. So the way SPF 50 works is you're creating a uniform film on the skin, protecting you from UV. Now, whatever you put on top after your SPF is going to disrupt that film mm -hmm. unless you let it dry. Yeah. So what I would say is put your moisturizer on, put your sunscreen on, I take to wait about a minute until my sunscreen is completely dry before I pop on any makeup. Then every two hours I will top up my sunscreen with a powder-based um, SPF okay. 50 so okay. it doesn't affect my makeup. Um, do you put that on with like a brush? Yeah, or? so Color Science, for example, yeah. is uh, is just literally it's just a brush, it's really convenient okay. and you pop it on. Um, there are lots of many different mm. that are SPF 15, you can use them. Okay, well. amazing. Great, okay, fine. So we've done our two layers, now what should we put on? So we've done that, now what? Then it's just, if you want to put makeup on, that's fine. Yeah. And then just your SPF throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And then at night time, you want to wash your face properly use so right. double cleanse because you want to remove all the sunscreen all the makeup everything that's on the skin pollution mm. as well which can yeah. aggravate any acne and um, I would uh, after you double cleanse use your gel moisturizer so in terms of double cleansing so what are you using to get rid of your makeup so double are you using cleanse the cleansing to get rid of the makeup yeah or are you using that just to clean the skin before you go to bed yeah so for people who have acne, I would recommend you use a micellar gel wash twice. Okay. So it's a double cleanse just means that you're doing it twice. Often one wash is not going to be enough. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that, say you put makeup on yeah, and yeah. you clean your face once, you put your face on a white towel and your face. <laughs> I've definitely done yeah. that. Yeah. I, like, I thought, but what if I'm on my towel? <laughs> yeah. <Exactly. laughs> but if acne is not your issue, then use an oil cleanser first because it's much better at okay. dissolving oil sunscreen okay. and then your micellar gel on top. So oil first, then the micellar. Correct. And would anything that you recommend in terms of actually removing it? So like cotton wool, bars, there's also yeah. like you can get the uh, like eco, eco, eco yeah. friendly. Goes with usable. the eco. Yeah. Goes and then the how do you wash that? Because like, you know, it's if it's like a, a cloth yeah. or like a flannel that some people use you just rinse it under the water so just just rinse it and yeah. then just leave it out to dry yeah, yeah, yeah. okay away from the toilet seat away from the toilet you don't want any flush and any of that rubbish <laughs> on your yes. face oh, products you no way to <laughs> <laughs> you need to avoid that no poo particles anywhere near <laughs> but it's important right it's like, important just, just in case you yeah. didn't know <laughs> Fine, okay, perfect. Okay, so the next question is, if you've already watched the PCOS video, you know that there's an element of insulin resistance that you can get with PCOS. So it's really important that we get on top of all those kind of cardiovascular risk factors that you might have. But one thing that you mentioned was acanthosis nigricans, and that is like that rash, that sort of a velvety uh, texture on your skin, and that can lead to pigmentation. So how do we deal with that skin issue? Okay, so this is basically thickened, velvety skin at the mm, back, like mm, you said. Mm. Um, but actually, the, the key here, people used to come into my clinic and say, can you treat the pigmentation? Mm. But actually, you can't do that until you've treated the underlying cause here, which is obesity yeah. and insulin resistance. So the first thing I say is you need to shed the weight um, and in mm. order to see any benefit for treatment. Yeah. Um, and so what I would say is you really do also want to be on a low GI diet. So you don't want to have spikes okay. of glucose and spikes of insulin. Yeah. Um, and you also want to be consuming anti-inflammatories. So, um, so tell us a bit more, like what kind of foods specifically are low GI? Low GI. And, okay. So and how often should we be eating? Yeah. And, you know, there's different fastings. Like what's your opinion on all of those things to control our insulin? I'm a, I'm a, big fan of intermittent fasting anyway <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but in terms of GI foods high GI would be things like white bread uh, white potatoes yeah. red meat they all give you insulin spikes sugar sugar is your worst enemy mm. even though it's something 
we're basically all addicted to. <laughs> yeah, um, it's not your friend. Yeah. So that's one thing. And then the other one is is having low GI. So low GI things would be spinach, kale, um, berries. I have high uh, antioxidants. Were yeah. good for you too. Um, salmon. So you're getting your omega threes, which is important for your skin barrier. Yeah. So that's quite interesting that you mentioned those because when I when I have patients, they say, actually, you know what? I just love carbs. Like I just love eating carbs, and who doesn't? What can I do? And it's so hard to say. Oh, you know what? You just need to eat kale. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like no one wants to eat kale. <laughs> so I hate kale. I hate kale. I'm, I'm going to be honest. You have to put it in like a smoothie with all like the berries and all the sweet it, stuff. Do you think it gets better with the? I mean, I like spinach. I actually really like <laughs> spinach in a, in any way. Spinach actually is yeah. delicious in yeah. a drink, even. But kale, I don't kale, know. I kale's just, a difficult one. So, it is. so if, if you are one of those people that just love carbs, yeah. the best thing you can do is wholemeal food. Okay. So, you know, we spoke about like, you know, the, the, the white bread, but actually just swap it for something simple like brown bread, yeah. seeded bread, brown pasta, and that just, you know, reduces that, that, reduces that risk of insulin resistance. Um, so, yeah, if, yeah. if you're like me and love carbs, then, you know, you don't need to have kids have difficult life just you need to eat what you want and <laughs> you enjoy your life the really good one actually is porridge i think porridge mm. is excellent fills you up it's low gi it's healthy put in some berries and like you will be done like you won't don't need to eat anything yeah. for those four hours yeah. you will be full um so i think that's something that i would just mm. highly encourage as your okay. one of your meals of the day basically okay perfect okay so um moving on to other types of treatment yeah so we've spoken about acne we've spoken about acanthosis nigricans and lifestyle changes we can do and hair, excess hair excess hair is and really ex important and excess hair so what kind of things so so what type of laser so lots of people are going for laser hair removal yeah. and you can get quite good affordable packages for laser hair removal but what specific lasers should we be looking at yeah. for ptos patients yeah so specifically when it comes to um PCOS, but also for skin of color, I would always recommend long wavelength laser. Okay. So NDAG laser. And the reason is it basically bypasses. So if you think about the skin, it's the epidermis and then mm -hmm. the basal layer and then the dermis. Yeah. This is where the melanocyte lives. You basically want your laser to go past the basal layer to the mm -hmm. root of the hair follicle that's sitting in the dermis nicely mm -hmm. without irritating the guard, without irritating the melanocyte. And the way to do that, secretly bypass it, is by using this long wavelength to get down to the hair follicle without causing hyperpigmentation. Because that's one of the biggest side effects of laser is PIH, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. But if, you know, if my children ever, see ever turns out to get PCOS, I would probably laser from a younger age rather than go through waxing um, and traumatize gentle skin that or uh, creams mm. uh, depilator creams where basically almost uh, it burns the the uh, the hair follicles so it's mm. slightly lower than the epidermis which means it takes longer for hair to grow back mm. um, that's a really good first step um, but later as they get to 18 I'd probably probably yeah. give a recommend laser out so a lot of women are going through laser because of you know hair just being such a massive issue and it's not just you know on the arms and legs it's in really visible places yeah. like you know the face, the face and on, on the chest the jaw, on the belly yeah. now is it safe to be using laser in all these sensitive areas you know even in the pubic areas yeah. people are very hairy and that, that, that affects them so yeah. Is it, is it sensible to be doing that? I think for yeah. for something like Soprano Ice, mm -hmm. so NDAG laser, I would say yes, mm -hmm. because it's got also got an anti-inflammatory uh, mechanism to it. So it's not just heating the hair, it's cooling simultaneously. So yeah. you've got less chance of irritation. Um, and now it's becoming painless too. I remember when I first started, I did yeah. it once yeah. and they did like this much of my underarm and yeah. I just thought I'm never, I'd rather be hairy. This is just, it's just not for me. Like yeah. I think I screamed as if I was giving birth. It was. Oh my goodness. I don't know, I think I've just got a very low pain. Yeah, child. no, it is painful. It is. And it's just, you know, what women have to go through for beauty and for confidence, isn't it? I feel we like we have a <laughs> much harder life than men, I'm telling yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that everything? I think a couple of other things that I would add in with yeah. supplements. So okay. yes. anti-inflammatory supplements such as copper, mm -hmm. zinc, uh, vitamin C, vitamin E, so also your antioxidants. Mm. Um, these also help with your skin barrier and uh, reducing any free radicals, um, okay. especially if you're going to be doing things topically as well. Okay. So I think those it's worth adding those as your daily supplements. Like as a multivitamin type yeah, thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so if you're taking anything you know, over the counter, that's fine. Just make sure you tell your doctor if you start anything 
new just Correct. because of interactions and we don't want to overload you yeah. with too much vitamin. Absolutely. But anything else you wanted to add with I us think that's today? Much yeah. it. I think once you've done amazing. all that, you'll be tired. So. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for all those amazing skincare tips for oh, QCOS. Uh, we're so lucky to have Dr. V on our channel today. Um, if you have any questions for Dr. V, drop them in the comments below. And it's not just PCOS. We know skincare can affect you in so many different conditions. So please do drop them below and we can do another video on it. And um, if you are listening to us via podcast on Fertility and Femtech, also please watch us on YouTube and you can also check out Dr. V on her YouTube channel. Um, and so until next time, take care. See you soon. Bye. Bye.